Hello everyone and welcome to Roadmap. And uh, today's topic is transportation and excretion in plants and animals. This is part one. And if you like the video, don't forget to click on thumbs up button. You can also subscribe for more videos and you can give your suggestions in the comment section. So let's continue with our chapter. The topics to be covered are introduction, transportation of materials in organisms in um, unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms and transportation of materials in plants, human circulatory system, excretion, excretory system in humans and excretion in some other animals. So these are the topics which we are going to learn. Coming to the introduction, you must have learned that food is digested, right? And how food is digested and absorbed? Through the digestive system of animals. In green plants, it is manufactured in leaves and it does not remain there as it has to be utilized by all the tissues and cells of the body to carry out various life processes. Now, tell me one thing that what is life process? We all do daily activities in life, right? So we move from one place to another. This is nothing but a movement. And this movement is nothing but a life process. So I hope you understand what understood what life process is. So examples of life process like movement, growth, sensitivity, these are all the examples of life processes. So therefore, food must be transported because to carry out these life processes, we move and we do all the daily activities. For that, we require energy and that energy comes from food we eat. So, the transportation of food, how is this done? The body of an organism must have an efficient method of carrying materials from one organ to other through a transport system. And so why a transport system is very important. In this chapter, we are going to learn about the transport system, like how the transportation takes place. In this chapter, you will be able to know about different modes of transportation in organisms, to understand the importance of transportation, to apply knowledge and find how plants obtain various substances to prepare their food, to analyze the term of ascent of sap, to evaluate the methods of excretion in plants and to demonstrate circulation of blood in human body. So, coming back to the transportation system, we are going to learn in detail. Now, transportation of materials takes place, right? And transportation of materials takes place in unicellular organisms as well as in multicellular organisms. It takes place in plants, it takes place in animals, it takes place in us, like in human body. So, we are going to learn, <clears throat> learn now transportation of materials in unicellular organisms. In simple organisms, what does the diagram shows? Which animal is it? Which organism is it? As it, the shape is irregular, this means that simply it is amoeba. So, in simple organisms like the unicellular organism like amoeba and paramecium, the materials move in or out of the body by the process of diffusion. So diffusion is the process where the materials move in or out and is kept in circulation by the streaming movement of the cytoplasm. So it is in circulation with the help with the movement of cytoplasm. You can see the dots in the diagram that, that is nothing but a cytoplasm. So the streaming movement of cytoplasm takes place in amoeba. A well-defined transport system is absent in these simple organisms because the cell remains in direct contact with the environment. 
so a well defined transport system is absent in unicellular organism like amoeba because the cell remains in direct contact with the environment so i hope you got the transportation of materials in unicellular organisms how it takes place first that the materials move in and out of the body through diffusion and the streaming movement takes a uh, circulation is taken place by the streaming movement of cytoplasm and a well defined transport system is absent because of the direct contact with environment so these are the three points that you have to remember okay now coming to the transportation of materials in multicellular organisms now guess the figure which is there in the diagram you must have went to river system and you must have seen many a times green color so what does green color indicates it is nothing but algae so transportation of materials in multicellular organisms like algae algae is the example of multicellular organisms in multicellular organisms there is a definite system of internal transport and in plants transport of materials is carried out by vascular tissue system the transport system in man is also called as is called as circulatory system so the two important points about the transportation of materials in multicellular organisms is that the internal transport and vascular tissue system so so far we have learned about the transportation of materials in unicellular organisms in amoeba diffusion takes place and the movement of cytoplasm and the direct contact with the environment so there is the absence of transport system and the transportation of materials in multicellular organisms internal transport vascular tissue system why transport system is important how it is important in our life process and how it is done so in our next lessons we will learn about the transportation of materials in plants and uh, the transportation of system in human beings so just stay tuned for more lessons to come and i hope you like the video thank you for watching